Hi, I'm Shanaz. In last lecture, we did uh, the nil radical of a ring. In this lecture, we are going to uh, study the Jacobson radical of a ring. So, let us first define what do we mean by a Jacobson radical. So, we have this definition of Jacobson radical. Uh, so, Uh, the Jacobson radical let us denote this by J sub A of a ring A is the intersection of all maximal ideals. So that is J sub A is actually the intersection of M where this intersection runs over maximal ideals. M is a maximal ideal. So in last lecture we proved that the nil radical of a ring A is actually the intersection of all prime ideals. So it is intersection over P where P is prime ideal. Now since every prime uh, every maximum ideal is a prime ideal then we have this uh, observation that the Jacobson radical of a ring is actually contained in the nil radical of A. Now this they uh, sometimes may be equal for example if we look at PIDs then we know that there is no decision between prime ideals and maximal ideals so in PIDs uh, they are actually equal so let us mm, now we have this uh, proposition which is that an element x belongs to the Jacobson radical of a ring A uh, if and only if 1 minus x times y is a unit in A for some uh, for some y in a let us prove this so first we are going to prove this direction so let us assume uh, an element is in the Jacobson radical so let x belongs to j of a then we have to prove uh, 1 minus x y is unit for some y in a suppose uh, assume otherwise I mean uh, suppose 1 minus x y is not a unit for any y in uh, a is not a unit uh, where this y is in a Mm. now if mm, a 1 minus x y is not a unit that means this is a non unit and we know that every non unit uh, belongs to some maximal ideal so then 1 minus x y must belong to some maximal ideal C M. But uh, J of A being the intersection of all maximal ideals, uh, 
uh, we have x is in j of a and j of a um, is contained in m because j sub a is intersection of all maximal ideals so that means uh, so, so hence x y belongs to m because m being an ideal uh, hence x y is in m for some y in a now so that means therefore uh, we can write one which is equal to one minus x y plus x y now one minus x y is a non unit hence is an element of m and here we see that x y is also an element of m so that means this element here uh, is an element of m so this must belong to m but uh, this is absurd because one goes inside m and hence m is equal to a so this implies uh, this m is the unital ideal which is absurd which is absurd so therefore 1 minus x y is uh, a unit for all y in a now let us prove this direction now we are going to prove 1 minus x y is unit for all y in a and we are going to prove x is in the Jacobson radical so suppose um, 1 minus x y is a unit in a for all y in a now we have to prove x is uh, x is in the jacobson radical suppose uh, not suppose um, x is not in the jacobson radical uh, then there is some maximal ideal m which does not contain x because j a being the intersection of all maximal ideals then there x a maximal ideal uh, say m such that x is not in m because j a being the intersection of all maximal ideals and x not being the element of j a implies there is some maximal ideal m which does not contain x now m being maximal ideal that means the ideal generated by the elements of m and uh, element x must be uh, a unital ideal so then m and x will generate the unital ideal Mm, that is M and X they are going to generate the unital ideal uh, in other words there is some element in this ideal which is equal to 1 uh, let us suppose that element is of the form uh, m plus x y is one for some y in a and m in m this implies um, m is actually one minus x y now m being an element of m so 1 minus x y is also element of m 
so this means since 1 minus x y uh, is by hypothesis the unit that means m is unit so this implies m is in the this little m is in this big m is a unit which is not the case because m is a maximal ideal which is not the case hence x is in jacobson radical a now there is this short uh, exercise about the units that is uh, if x is a nil potent element then 1 plus x is always a unit i.e show that if x is a nil potent element in a ring a then 1 plus x is a unit in a and from this reduce that sum of a unit and a nil potent is also uh, a unit so this is a trivial exercise let us uh, see the solution so so let x be a nil potent element of a ring A mm, then uh, by definition the exists n belongs to n such that x to the power n is 0 now consider the element now 1 plus x times 1 minus x plus x square minus plus minus 1 up power uh, n x power n so this is actually equal to the 1 plus uh, minus 1 power n x power n plus 1 so this is uh, this element here but x being the nil potent with index of nil potency n so this element here is 0 so this is equal to 1 so this implies that this 1 plus x is a unit because this is in one unit and this is it is uh, 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 this is another unit and sometimes we call if a is a unit then we write a times b is 1 where b is some other element uh, of the ring uh, so if a is unit we call b as it is associate so here uh, 1 plus uh, x is unit and this is uh, uh, the associate mm, note that all uh, associates are uh, units as well so therefore 1 plus x is a unit now we have to uh, deduce from this result that if uh, x is a unit and u suppose if u is a unit and x is a nil potent then their sum is a unit so let u be a unit in a and then u inverse uh, times x is a nil potent because x is a nil potent and um, we can see here u inverse times x power n is u power minus n x power n which is zero so this is a nil potent element now using the uh, above and therefore now u inverse x is a nil potent so therefore 1 plus u inverse x is a unit uh, by the 
previous result and hence u times 1 plus u inverse x is which is equal to u plus x is also a unit because um, product of two units is also a unit so u is a unit and 1 plus u minus x is also a unit so their product is a unit and their product is equal to the u plus x so sum of a unit and a nil potent is always a unit <laughs> now we have a short lemma so let a be a ring then the following are equivalent so the first item is a has exactly one prime ideal the second item is every element of a is either a unit or null potent every element of a is either a unit or nil potent uh, and finally a mod the nil radical of a is a field let us prove this so first we'll prove item first implies item second so we are going to assume that uh, a has exactly one prime ideal so suppose uh, B B the only prime ideal in A. So this is our hypothesis. Now if this is the case, that means now nil radical of A being the intersection of all prime ideals, uh, we note here uh, P being the only prime ideal, we note here that nil radical of A is P. So, therefore, nil radical of A is actually the ideal P. Now, since P is a prime ideal and hence uh, any, I, uh, uh, I mean an ideal, now knowing that any ideal uh, in a ring is contained in some maximal ideal that means also P is contained in some maximal ideal of A Uh, because we know that uh, if A uh, is a ring so actually this A is a non-zero ring so we know that uh, if A is any non-zero ring and I is an ideal then there is some uh, maximal ideal which contains uh, the that ideal so now knowing the fact that every maximal ideal is a prime ideal and the fact that p has uh, a has exactly one uh, prime ideal this implies uh, the maximal ideal is and that maximal ideal is p uh, is p i mean mm, so let us first assume here so p is contained in some maximal ideal say uh, say it is not necessary to write uh, it here so 
B is contained in some maximal ideal of A. Th uh, this implies uh, P is the only maximal ideal of A since every maximal ideal is a prime ideal so this is the reason now uh, we have to prove uh, any element of a is either nil potent or a unit so let x belongs to a be any element So if x belongs to the nil radical of A, then x is nil potent. Now suppose x does not belong to, uh, so suppose x does not belong to nil radical, i.e. x belongs to uh, the ring A minus n of a and that is x is not a nil potent then we have to prove x is uh, a unit so if x is a unit we are done suppose not then we know that uh, if suppose uh, x is a non unit then it must be contained in some maximal ideal but p being the only maximal ideal that means x is in p suppose not then x is contained in some maximal ideal of a that is x is in p since p is the only maximum ideal and p which is equal to the nil radical of a but here uh, we have mm, chosen this element from uh, outside uh, uh, of n a so this is a contradiction therefore x has to be a unit now let us who this second implies third suppose every element of a is either a unit or nil potent suppose every element of A is uh, either a unit or a nil potent so we have to prove A mod the nil radical of A is a field so then each x which is in a but outside the nil radical of a is a unit by hypothesis now if we know that n is the ideal of a now if we know uh, if mm. m is an ideal of a such that every element in the set a minus m is a unit then m is the only maximum ideal in a so therefore n a is the only maximal ideal in a hence a mod 
and a is a field finally to prove third implies first suppose a mod the nil radical of a is a field we have to prove uh, this Mm, uh, a has exactly one prime ideal so therefore and a is the maximal ideal is the maximal ideal of a by definition now if uh, let let us consider so let p be any prime ideal in uh, A. So let us pick any prime ideal in A. Then P must contain nil radical of A because nil radical of A is the intersection of all prime ideals. But uh, Na is maximal here. That means this P is must be equal to the Na. Uh, so let us write down the reason here since P is intersection of sorry uh, since nil radical A is uh, or it is not necessary this is not necessary to write here this is uh, straightforward so P must contain the nil radical of A uh, but nil radical of a being maximal because this is a field here we have p is called n a that means p is the only uh, prime ideal in a therefore p is the only prime ideal in A which is in this case the nil radical and this proves this lemma uh, 